Hello and welcome to MB Tech. My name is Matthew Bingham and today we're going to be going over setting up the Proxmox server. So first thing that we need to do is actually go out to the Proxmox website and we will select the downloads and then from the downloads we're going to select the Proxmox ISO. Once the uh, Proxmox ISO is downloaded uh, we are going to be using a product that you can actually download. It's the Raspberry Pi Imager. Um, from the Raspberry Pi Imager, we're actually going to select Custom, and then from Custom, we're actually going to select the ISO that we just downloaded, and then the device is going to be the USB device that we're going to be setting this up on to install on. This is asking about customizations. We say no to that, and then we are going to continue. It's just letting you know that it will erase everything off from that USB device. This will take a little bit of time, so we'll uh, fast forward through this once it's finished. It has been finished and it is now installed on the USB drive. Now we're going to the HP desktop and from the desktop we're going to hit the escape key to get into the boot menu and from the boot menu we're going to select that USB uh, device uh, that has the ISO from Proxmox on it and now we're into the uh, installation of the Proxmox virtual environment. From there we're selecting the install. This is the licensing agreement. You can click agree on that. And then this is the actual uh, device that you're going to be installing on it, which on this one it is about a 120 gig hard drive. Uh, so that is what's uh, being displayed there. Um, from here you will select next. And this is where you actually get to uh, set up the country code as well as the uh, United States and time zone. This is where you're going to be setting up the Proxmox information with IP address and your DNS. And this is just a summary of everything that you've got set up for there. Um, and then you hit, hit uh, continue here. And it's starting to install the system. This does take a little bit of time, but we will fast forward through it to the very end. Um, it's quite uh, you know quick. It's very small installation, so it doesn't take that much time to install in general. Um, anywhere from you know, probably seven minutes uh, to uh, 10 minutes for the actual install itself. Um, like I said, we're kind of fast forwarding through it for this install. And now that it was installed and finished, we can reboot. And this is what it looks like from the host perspective. Going through the initial selection of the Proxmox server on the host and going through the basic Linux uh, back setup that it does in the background because it does run on Linux. And now it's telling us what the IP address is so we can switch over to our desktop. And from our desktop, we're gonna put in that IP address with the port of 8006. We'll log in with our root user and password. You get this little nag screen, but you can uh, click past that. And now we're actually gonna look at the uh, PVE itself and you can see what type of storage there is. There's local storage. There's actually a local VM as well. Uh, from here we're actually going to download Rocky Linux. Um, so we need to get the uh, URL from Rocky Linux website and uh, we'll install that into our ISOs uh, directory basically that is on the Proxmox server itself. Uh, from here we're at the Rocky Linux website. What we'll do here is uh, right click on the minimal and get the copy shortcut and then we will paste that shortcut back over onto our Proxmox where it says uh, the URL. Uh, we'll paste that in there, we'll have it check it and it shows us what the ISO is and we'll continue to download that. And it's starting to download the ISO itself. This once again will take some time so we'll fast forward through that. Once that's been completed, then we'll actually have the complete Rocky uh, or the minimal Rocky ISO on the system itself so that we can select that to create a VM. So now we're going to actually go in and create a VM uh, by clicking the tab up in the uh, upper right. And from create VM, we've got that and here is the name. We're just going to call it Rocky Test. If I can spell right <laughs> from Rocky test, uh, this is the actual setup. So we are going to select the ISO that we just uh, basically downloaded from that storage location. And then we can actually set up the uh, system itself. 
and then in the system we're going to use the default everything looks good there disk we're just going to use the default which is 32 gig we're going to set it on the local but eventually i'll show you how to set up an nfs um, so you can actually have your storage on an nfs uh, which will be pretty cool and then from here uh, just looking at what size is there um, so that's fine and next we're going to select cpu uh, this is kind of a small system there's only uh, four cpus on there so we're just going to use one uh, of this uh, so it says that there in the total cores is one and then our memory we're going to use the default of two gig uh, here we're going to use the uh, default uh, bridge which is the uh, ip address or i'm sorry the network interface for that system and we're going to click finish so now the configuration part has been set up for the actual vm the os has not been installed yet uh, what we're going to do is going to start the vm and once we start the vm then it's actually going to hit the iso and from that iso now we're going to select uh, install the rocky linux and once we hit install rocky linux it will start going through the uh, basic rocky linux setup and this would be anything as if it was on a physical machine vm which we're doing or any other type of uh, basic install on a system it's going through the initial boot up process that's going to be going into the uh, actual uh, graphic now and then here we're going to select our uh, language which is english for both here we're going to actually select the installation destination. The installation destination is the hard drive that we created earlier of the 32 gigs. We're just going to hit done there. That way it clicks a check box and makes that check. Uh, we've got our software, which is minimal, uh, and that's fine. Uh, you can actually select that if you want or not. It really doesn't matter. It's basically the same setup. Uh, regardless of what you select in that one unfortunately um, here you're going to select the network make sure that it gets an ip address from the uh, segment that you're on it looks like we did so we're good there and next we need to set the root password um, put your root password in twice here i'm actually going to select the uh, allow ssh um, for that uh, so we can check that box as well and then now we can select done and then from here we're going to do the uh, start installation once again this will take some period of time but i'm going to fast forward through that to make it a lot easier and quicker um, so we should be set that's gone through because of speed <laughs> and then we are going to reboot the system this will just be going through the basic uh, boot up of the rocky linux itself um, that has come up now it says welcome so we're good to go there Everything looks like it's coming up as we want to, no issues, and it should leave us at a actual prompt. And we're at the prompt, we can log in with the root and then the password that we gave it earlier, and we should be into the system. Now that we're in the system, we can actually go back to our Proxmox, and we can see that it's there with some of the information about it, as well as CPU usage, memory, storage, and network traffic um, so everything looks good on that system and that's it we are all set up proxmox has been installed we've downloaded an iso we've installed the rocky linux iso into a vm and now we've got a full proxmox uh, virtual environment with a vm of rocky linux running i hope you enjoyed that and i hope you have a great night thank you for watching and there'll be plenty more to come and again thank you for watching mb tech